Good afternoon, and, wel and welcome to Annunciation Parish. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. Our parish is at nearly 80% of its goal for the Partners in Charity Appeal. There are many individuals who gave last year who have not done so yet. Please consider making a donation. This appeal assists many programs and services. If you have never given before, you can call the office or go on the parish website to be connected to the Partners in Charity website to give electronically. The annual HFA Golf Classic will be held on August 7th. Please see the bulletin and website for more information. We will be having our monthly First Friday Mass this Friday at 6.30 p.m. at Holy Spirit. This brief Mass will be followed by exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and opportunity for confessions. The evening concludes with a benediction at 7.30 p.m. All are welcome to attend all or just a portion of the prayers. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon. Today we hear of Jesus feeding a crowd, and feeding them not only with food, but feeding them spiritually, mentally, and internally. And we turn to God knowing that he does the same for us in our emptiness. So now as we prepare ourselves for this Eucharist where we may be fed, we call to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the author of our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Have mercy on us. Be us in the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers, answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. And the Lord gives us the answers of our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. And the Lord A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourself. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them to me. And he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, 
and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. We need so much to be filled. And we can forget how much God is there to help us, to fill us, to feed us. I know this young man, he's just about 30 years old, and I've known him since he was a teenager. Now, he was taken from his parents when he was very young, just uh, under a year old. He was adopted by a family that he now has no contact with. He's often felt rejected, and he's starved emotionally. He is, you know, really a very warm and loving person. He's got a big heart. It's just that he is so empty. There's something inside of him that needs so much to be filled. Now, he's tried to fill that emptiness with drugs, with a string of really bad relationships, food, sex, blowing a lot of money on things he didn't need. He even tried to fill that gap with God. Imagine that. But he kind of pulled back on that after a while. I just spoke to him the other day, and he's doing much better. Um, He's not doing drugs, and he's got a lot of things under control in his life. He still talks about God, though, in this kind of distant way. God's not really actively involved in taking care of the things for him. He's still missing a final piece of what he needs to be filled. In our first reading, the prophet says, Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? You know, why do we put our money into things? We put our effort, whether it's, you know, not just physical money, but whether it's our effort, our energy, our lives, into things that don't really satisfy. For my young friend, all the food, drugs, sex, and trying to get people to like him, all of this never really fully satisfied. There is a depth within us that's meant to be filled by God, and God is willing to do it. We may have to try to go the way of God. We all may have tried, actually, to go that way of God, and maybe we didn't stick with it. It doesn't give a quick result. God is not a quick fix. God isn't like a drug or a quick thing. It takes time. We want fast solutions. It's hard sometimes to go through that process of building a relationship with God that's needed. But as we know, many good things in life don't come fast. Many marriages have to marinate for a number of years before good things come from them. Many times we have to work very hard at things for many years before the results start coming out. We sometimes think God is not working fast enough. But no, God's going just the right speed. God is always there waiting. God is there loving. God also said through that same prophet, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. If you're thirsty, come to the water. If you have no money, come. Receive grain and eat. He's saying we don't have to do something to buy God's love. It's like you have nothing to give, just come anyway. Come receive that that nourishment. Come receive that refreshment. It's a, a just wants the openness and the effort to build that relationship. God wants us to drink from an endless stream that is life-giving. God wants us to eat from a source of food that is eternal. What is that food? What is that drink that God speaks of? 
Well, Jesus, who is God among us, gives us a clue about that in the gospel today. When all those people come to him to be fed, he feeds them in many ways. He feeds them mentally and spiritually. They were there looking for his teaching and his healing. He didn't hold back. Just look at the scene. He's out there, he's been teaching for hours. He's been teaching for hours and hours and hours, and he goes off to be by himself. Goes off to commune with the Father, as we all should do. A good example to all of us amid the pressures. Pull back, go and be with God. He's just heard that John, his beloved cousin, has been killed. No one would fault him for wanting to go and be by himself and go and pray. No one would fault him like, he has done enough for today. Time to clock out on the simplex time clock. It is time. It is done for the day. But the prophet said, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. He does not turn away when people come to him in need. Jesus nourishes them mentally with words of preaching. He nourishes them bodily by multiplying those donations of food given by his disciples. God provides in a big way humankind with all we need. And he trusts us to distribute that as he entrusted that bread and that fish to his disciples to distribute. He wants us just to bring what we have whatever it is, how little it is, how insignificant it is for the need, and let him multiply it. And he will put it back in our hands to spread, to be used for this world. Through the Spirit, God has given the church an understanding of divine revelation, and God provides enough food and enough resources across the world for everyone if we would just share it, if we would use it wisely. Today, we also can reflect on the fact that God wants ultimately to fulfill an even deeper longing than just our mind, than just our bodies. We all have that deeper longing to fill, including my young friend I talked to you about. We just sometimes have a hard time also filling that need. Sometimes we're not even aware it's there. And that's why we go off into all other things to fill it. Jesus' action today when he feeds that crowd, it's a foreshadowing of the Eucharist where he gives us the food that contains a great treasure. Listen, you know, he took the food. He said the blessing. He broke it. He gave it. That's the same kind of thing we're going to hear in just a few minutes that he does at the Last Supper. Just like he gave himself to people who came to him on the hillside, Jesus gives himself to us in the Eucharist. Just as they were hungering and thirsting for something, so are we. We can put in the effort to open ourselves to the presence of Jesus. Can we do that? Can we open ourselves to that presence in the Eucharist? Can we let him give us a spiritual gift that will help us to begin to be satisfied more deeply? Let's try today. Let's ask Jesus to help fill those deepest needs, even if they're needs we're not aware of. If you've tried before and dropped off, try again. Don't be like my friend who tried only the quick things and found out that they don't really work in the end. Be ready to have patience and to stop frantically trying to fill an infinite void without the infinite God. Once you are able to open to that power, once you open the door, God will open that door to the infinite void and fill that. Amazing things can happen. Jesus comes to us with great love as he came to the crowd. And if we join with him in our hearts and our minds, if we truly become part of that body in service of God and of our neighbor, if we unite ourselves properly in the Eucharist, nothing can take us away from that which he wishes to give us. Nothing can take us away from that love that he has for us. Paul said it today, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor future things nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other creature 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This same love is the love that impelled God to come to us in Jesus. It is the love that can truly and fully complete us. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the God. Through him all things remain, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not be end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the Lord. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now in faith to that God who is of great love and seeks to fill us, and we offer him these prayers. That the church leaders, stewards of our faith, will live in a way that will draw all believers to know Christ. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen that the world's government authorities will work together in the cause of global peace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That those who live with chronic illness, especially those suffering with COVID-19, will find assurance that they are always in God's tender care. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That all who share pastoral gifts of hospitality be blessed with patient and loving hearts. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That our parish will grow in faith and respect for all believers. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That those who have died will receive the Lord's embrace and everlasting life. Especially Peter J. Monka, whom we remember at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, we turn in great trust to you in our emptiness and our need. Hear all these prayers we've offered. Hear the prayers that lie deep in our hearts in need of fulfillment. And answer all these, we pray. For we ask them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A history of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Peter Manka, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. So just a brief reminder, as you come up for communion, please come from one side or the other, group to group, and form a single file line in the middle of the aisle, so you're separated from each other and from the, the people who are still sitting in the pews. When you come to the front, you can go off to the two sides. We ask, um, if, you if you plan to receive on the tongue, to please come to the priest. And remember, we talked about last time, when you wave your hands out, wait till the Lord is placed in your hand. Say amen, still with your mask on. Pick up Jesus, hold him tight. Don't drop Jesus. And then now you have a free hand. You can step to one side, lift your mask, remove your mask, and be able to place Jesus in and then readjust. And for those who are downstairs, uh, someone will be coming down to bring communion to you.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never care, failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think it's wonderful to see some of the people able to be coming back. Uh, this is probably one of our, the largest groups coming back in recent weeks. Um, so we're very happy about that. Remember, we do have space downstairs as well, so we, we can keep things spread out, and hopefully this craziness ends at some time pretty soon, or we can go back to more normal things. But um, it's a wonderful blessing for you, and I'm sure the Lord is very pleased. So the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.